morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about integers and absolute values. Okay, so first of all, what is an integer? An integer is the uh, positive and negative counting numbers, okay, and zero. So you're looking at, um, uh, like, let's write it this way. Um, positive and negative whole numbers. So no fractions, no decimals, anything like that. Okay, so the following are integers. How about um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and forever. Okay, those are your integers. Okay, what is absolute value? Um, absolute value is essentially the distance a number is from zero. Okay, so remember, distance is always positive, right? So you can't have a negative distance. You can only get a distance of zero. And then you can't get any less than that. So distance is always positive. That's why we think of absolute value as a distance. So if you have something like um, the absolute value of 4, well, the distance of 4 from 0 is just 4. But the absolute value of negative 4, the distance from 0, is also 4. So it just makes the negative go away on the number inside the absolute value signs. Uh, now, be very careful because if there's operations going on inside of there, that does not necessarily go away. For example, if I have the absolute value of uh, 6 <coughs> minus 2, I don't, make the ab I don't make the negative go away first. What I do is I do the 6 minus 2 first. That's the absolute value of 4, and then that's just 4. So I have to do everything inside of here first. This is a grouping symbol. Just like parentheses are, you got to do everything inside here first, and then take the absolute value. Okay. So find the absolute value of two. Well, the absolute value of two is just two. Find the absolute value of negative four. So the absolute value of negative four is just 4. Okay, now it's your turn. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video here, and I want you to do these four problems. Find the absolute value of 7, the absolute value of negative 1, the absolute value of negative 5, and the absolute value of 0. And then uh, once you got that written down, jump back on here and uh, compare your answers. Okay, so the absolute value of 7 is just 7. The absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Now, this is a little tricky one. The absolute value of 0, well, uh, think about it as a distance. How far is 0 away from 0? It's 0 away from 0, so that's just 0. Okay, compare uh, 1 and the absolute value of negative 4. So how do I compare that? Well, uh, the first thing I need to do is figure out what the absolute value of negative 4 is, and that's just uh, 4. So this is really compare um, 1 and 4. So we could say that 4 is greater than 1, so the absolute value of negative 4 is greater than 1. Um, 
we could say that the distance between the absolute value of 4 and 1, or negative 4 and 1, is 3, because 4 minus 1 is 3. This is what I'm looking for right here. So complete the following statements with a less than, a greater than, or an equal to sign. So the absolute value of negative 2 and negative 1. Well, if I go ahead and I do the absolute value of negative 2, that's positive 2. And that is definitely greater than uh, negative 1, so we're going to put a greater than sign in there. Remember, the small number eats up the big number, so the, the mouth is open this way. Uh, 7 and the absolute value of 6. Well, if I rewrite that, that's negative 7 and 6. So this one's pretty obvious that this uh, negative 7 is less than 6. The absolute value of 10 and 11. Well, that's just 10 and 11, so this would be a less than sign would go right there. <clears throat> and finally, 9 and the absolute value of negative 9. Uh, this, okay, so... 9, it's just 9, and the absolute value of negative 9 is also 9, so this would be an equal to sign would go right there. Okay. So the freezing point is the temperature at which liquid becomes a solid. So which substance in the table has the lowest freezing point? So you've got butter has a freezing point of 35 degrees. Now let's talk about what is a freezing point first. Freezing point is when a liquid becomes a solid, okay? So if you think of water, water is a solid when it's ice, okay? Uh, it's a liquid when it's water, and it's a gas when it's steam. So butter has a freezing point of 35 degrees. So anything below that, and it's frozen. Uh, airplane fuel has a freezing point of negative 53 degrees. You gotta get that really cold if you want it to freeze. Honey, negative three degrees. That's because it has a lot of sugar in it, and when you put sugar in something, it makes the freezing point get smaller. Uh, mercury, negative 39 degrees. Candle wax, 55 degrees. So if you think about it, candle wax melts really easy, okay? You can melt it in your hand, or like chocolate would be another thing that has a really high melting point. If you hold it in your hand, it just turns to chocolate mush, right? Um, so, um, yeah, so anyway, let's, uh, which substance in the table has the lowest freezing point? So we need to find the smallest number here. So the smallest number would be negative 53, and that would be airplane fuel. really have to get that cold to get it to freeze. Uh, is the freezing point of mercury or butter closer to the freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius? Okay, so <clears throat> we look at mercury. Mercury is uh, mercury's right here at negative 39 degrees, and butter is at 35 degrees. So which one is closer? So we can take the absolute value of negative 39 and we can compare that to 35. Okay, so uh, this becomes 39 and this is 35. So we're going to go ahead and slip a uh, greater than sign in here. So, um, so that means that butter is closer to the freezing point of water uh, than uh, mercury is. Four degrees closer. Okay, now notice that uh, this is zero degrees Celsius, so the whole Celsius system is set up on, on water. So you start out at zero is when it freezes, and 100 degrees is when it boils, so that's when it turns to steam. Uh, whereas uh, Fahrenheit, uh, water freezes at 32 degrees, and it freeze, or it boils at 212 degrees. 
Okay, so here you go. We've got a little assignment for you. I want you to do 1 through 45 odd. I've got the problems here and over here. And uh, do the best you can on those. And I will see you in class.